Yeah. But CCM was already he's over there. He's one now, he's one now, you know. CCM was already over there. You, you chose to stay over there. Um, Mr. He's Speaker, one, one the point is that <laughs> this government will continue to create where there's a basket, a box, a bag, a cap, or even a barrel. Who don't know Denzel Douglas don't know that. Who knows him know that he will create whatever barrel or basket or bag he have to create to make sure that people in this country can live a better quality of life. Oh yes. And the team that he has with him have one mission to ensure that that is carried out successfully. Mr. Speaker, the team over here, I haven't met anybody on this side over here that doesn't support that. We understand this what is taking the, place. But they want to delay it and so on. We <laughs> understand what is taking place in the global environment. Mr. Speaker, when the bill first came to Parliament about six weeks ago, I actually was abroad on government business. And that's one of the reasons why I'm so happy to be here today. Because this is a, a significant bill. This is a, a, a major, major bill. It's 150 pages. And you heard today about how many pages have already come about from inputs, from responses to the public debate and the feedback from the public. Mr. Speaker, as we have been debating here since Friday, and before that, in cabinet and in the various committees, and in the meetings briefing the Prime Minister and with the various stakeholders, suggestions have been coming forward. That is something that only began to happen when this government undertook a process, a policy of consultation on major pieces of legislation. The fact that it is only going to be for nine months as opposed to six years as they wanted it to be. Mr. So Speaker, how many people are going to, how, 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 how many countries are debate a bill for six years? <laughs> I tried to make the point that it was a lot easier for this government to move quickly into that post election simply because there was no change in government. The government was voted in to continue its program of economic development and economic transformation. That had been on the table. That was there, ready to come forward because so much preparatory work had already been done. So if they're saying that the public needed to be told two years in advance, then I, I have a problem with that. Architicians and divisions not able to come to grips with a tax in nine months? Mr. Speaker, if you can't come to grips with a tax in nine excuses, months, excuses. when are you going to come to grips with it? You come to grips with most things in nine months. A <laughs> uh, whole child. Take a whole child to come together in nine months. New life. Every nine months was perfectly chosen, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the point is that. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and after nine months, you're going to tell it come on, you're going to take it out. One of the things that I was reminded of in my one week trip to the UK six weeks ago was how graphic the whole issue of the changing economic environment around us <coughs> has become. And because of the many cushions that the government have provided here, because of the small size of our community and the, 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 the way in which we, we tend to, to you know, help each other to go through difficult times, that even the difficult times that many of us are facing here are nothing compared to what many others are facing in the world out there. I don't like to talk about job losses because even one job loss is a job loss to many. None of us likes the idea of a job loss of anybody. But when it comes to job losses, 
relatively speaking, there have been much less of a shock in St. Kitts and Nevis, even with the Four Seasons closing. Traumatic as it is for every individual who loses their job, we at least know the Four Seasons didn't close in the first instance because of bad economic times. It stayed closed, having been, having been damaged in a hurricane. It didn't reopen as quickly as we had hoped it would because of these economic times and because of financial issues related to the ownership of the hotel. But if you put that aside as a peculiar but dramatic issue, the rest of the Federation really hasn't experienced the kind of trauma and drama as a nation that so many others have been experiencing. The point though, Mr. Speaker, is that that trauma in the global environment has now landed on us. It has landed on us. And it is an opportunity for us to revisit a number of things, not least of which is how we operate in government, but also how we operate in the private sector. And the member for number five was speaking about an issue today that troubled me. It troubled me when I was preparing earlier today for the possibility of speaking today. When he said that we are assuming that business people will keep their markup at the same level. Exactly. I have noted it here. He said, <laughs> in effect, that the what was laughable about these examples that were provided by the VAT team was that they had assumed that the markup would remain the same. And that is so important because what he's saying is that right now, under the present dispensation, for a particular item being imported by the same business, that that business gets X dollars every time that passes from port to customer. And that because the price regime, the cost buildup has changed, it doesn't mean that they don't want to get the same money. <laughs> so where they have to move from 35%, as it was in the examples given, to 45% or 50 or 60, they will do it just to get the same money. Exactly. So this business community, according to one of the operatives in a major business, member for number five, is basically saying that his business is prepared to ask the consumer to pay more just for the sake, just for the sake of keeping their dollar value current. And to get the same profit. And this, Mr. Speaker, is the, the mistake is that businessmen must stop Close making door. in this country. You cannot Close increase door. value without adding quality and content. Business people in this country need to understand that you cannot carry up your price just to meet your profit. You must carry up your productivity. You must improve your efficiency. You must improve value. For people to pay you more, you must say, we are giving you better value. Mr. Speaker, the problem I have with the economic sectors in this country is that too many of us want to sit back, do the same thing, or even less, don't modernize, don't innovate, don't become market sensitive, don't get closer to your customers. Don't understand what is competitiveness. Don't understand the importance of being better for less. Mm. They want government to be better for less. They don't want government to charge any taxes. Government mustn't ask nobody to help pay for nothing. But government must be world class. <laughs> Douglas must be not 10 men in one, he must be 15 men in one. Mem mem member for number six, please. Member for number six.